Hey friend, welcome back to another Emily the Mystic video. I'm so excited for today's video as I always am because we are diving into a story and a topic that I have never talked about before here on my channel or even on Instagram and that is my story about me dealing with entity attachment in my own life and how I navigated that and also how that became such a blessing for me that spurred me into a whole new journey of self and discovering me, my shadow, and owning my divine darkness. So I can't wait to get into it with you. If you are new here, my name is Emily the Mystic and I'm an Akashic Records reader. I'm a spiritual mentor and coach for spiritual entrepreneurs. I'm a psychic development teacher and Akashic Records teacher as well. And I teach you how to own your spiritual and psychic gifts so that you can have more fun and joy in your life. And so I'm so excited that you're here and are willing to go on this dark path with me today as I share my story with you. So if you haven't seen on Instagram and if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you go check out my Instagram. You can find me, Emily the Mystic, there as well. But my dear friend, my past mentor, and now my current business partner, Kristen, and I, Kristen, her name on Instagram is the Underworld Queen, we have teamed up to create what is possibly the most epic group program that I know that exists out there in the spiritual space for specifically spiritual business owners, both new aspiring as well as current business owners who are wanting to expand. And, and this mentorship is called the Divine Darkness Academy. It is a six month journey to own your darkness, both in life and in business. And when you hear my story and the rest of this video, you're going to realize that your darkness, which you may have put in a corner or closed the closet door on or have tried to ignore for a long time, may be a part of yourself that is desperately wanting attention and love and is desperately wanting you to focus on it and to spend some time with it and to get to know it a little bit better. If the thought of encountering darkness and your darkness is freaking you the frick out, <laughs> this is why you need to be watching this video because my aim is to help dispel any myths around darkness and to help you understand that because we live in a universe of both light and dark, we have to get to know both parts of ourselves, the light and the shadow, the light and the dark, and that what we don't own owns us. So if we're not owning our darkness, we are ignoring it. It's a blind spot for us. And that could potentially create cracks and holes in our vibration, and that can be absolutely detrimental for you, which happened to me. And so I'm going to be sharing my story with you about that so that you can see why this is so important. And if you are completely bypassing and ignoring your shadow on your spiritual journey, this may be the next step that you really need to take on your spiritual path. So as you no, I'm sure, we tend to avoid darkness like the plague in the spiritual community. We tend to be so focused with blinders on to love and light only that we pretend like darker energy, darker beings, darker entities, and other things don't exist out there in the world in other dimensions, other planes and times. Even if we don't believe in these things, that doesn't mean that they don't exist. And I hate to burst your bubble and rip that band-aid off, but just because we don't want to believe in darkness doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And in fact, we can see, unfortunately, a lot of examples in our world today of darkness, of really horrible things that are happening all over the world. And this is not a video to encourage you to lean into doing terrible things by any means or to bring you to the dark side that in a way that would encourage you to be part of some of those darker horrible things that are happening in the world that's not what i mean at all in fact because darkness and our universe is based on that concept of polarity of light and dark 
We have to, as polar beings, we have to know and understand all parts of ourselves. That's part of the ascension process. The process of raising your vibration, of returning to source, is about unconditional love. And so therefore, that process also involves meeting those unhealed, darker parts of yourself with unconditional love. It's true. And so here's the thing. If we are trying to ignore our own darker inclinations, if we're trying to ignore our own shadow, if we're try trying to ignore heavier emotions and feelings uh, that we've experienced in the past and pretend that they don't exist, they're not going anywhere. They're still going to stay. They're just going to stay stuck in your shadow and they're going to be in your vibration and your vibration is going to continue to own you. So if you're feeling super stuck in your life and you're feeling like you can't move forward, it's probably because there's some unhealed stuff in your shadow that desperately needs some love and some attention. And I know, trust me, I've been there before too. We desperately want to the light, to win over the darkness. Well, of course, we want that to happen. We want good to always outweigh the bad. I mean, that is just the part of the natural human experience as well as our return to source. We want the light to always outweigh the bad. In order to do that, we have to meet our darkness with love. It is true <laughs> because when we get there in our journey, it raises our vibration so much that we become so full of unconditional love that it is a natural way to win over the darkness. We're becoming so much more full of love and we are letting go of all of the fear of the things that we don't want to take a look at that are happening in our world, okay? So that's why this is so, so, so impart important. And so for me, I didn't want to take a look at some of those darker things in my own life, in my own shadow. And by the way, the shadow is simply your unconscious mind and your unconscious experiences. They get stored in the mind and they get stored energetically in your vibration and in your auric field. Those things such as denser, heavier emotions like fear, like shame, like guilt, like revenge, revenge. Um, all of those heavy emotions get stored in the unconscious mind and they get reflected into, into our auric field. And therefore, we're walking around this gigantic vibrational uh, field of all of this heavy, dense stuff that we haven't taken a look at. And, there, and as we know from manifestation rhetoric, our vibration attracts things to us. So if our vibration is reflecting those darker parts of ourselves that we're not wanting to look at, we're going to be unconsciously manifesting experiences, circumstances, and people that remind us of those unhealed parts of our shadow that we are trying to ignore. So to move forward in life, this is important for anyone, but this is going to be especially important for those of you who are wanting to start or grow a spiritual business because you need to become educated and you need to become aware of you and who you are and your shadow to own all parts of yourself in order to best serve your clients and to best serve the world and to make and leave an impact here on this planet. Now, of course, this is a lifelong process. So working with your shadow, working with your darkness is not something that can happen overnight or in a week or in a month or in this six month container totally that Chris and I, and I are hosting together. It is a lifelong process, but this process still needs to begin and we can still do a lot of work in a very short amount of time if we so choose, if we focus our intention and energy on that. So for me, I want to share with you my experience of encountering my darkness firsthand when I encountered an entity attachment that happened to me at the end of 2022, or should I say the middle of 2022, um, in my experience with that. So at the end of last summer, my boyfriend and some friends and I had uh, bought tickets to this outdoor concert experience. And this outdoor concert happened to take place at a military fort that had been constructed in the 1700s during the Revolutionary War. 
So automatically, just based on that information, this was a place where there's going to be a lot of energetic activity. There's going to be a lot of paranormal activity, a lot of ghost activity. And I, being a spiritual practitioner, I'm pretty good with wearing my psychic protection. I do my little energy protection rituals daily if I can remember. Sometimes I forget. And unfortunately, in the days leading up to this concert, I wasn't doing my energetic protection rituals like I normally would. It just was, su- I was super busy at the time. I was focusing on other things. And so I just kind of forgot and didn't really think too much about it. So we go to this concert and we're having a great time. And there's this really cool uh, little mini restaurant within the concert experience where they that was built into an underground part of the fort with a wine vendor who was is well known in the area and I am not one to be shy about sharing on Instagram that I drink alcohol I love wine wine has been a big part of my life I my family and I we love to go wine tasting it's just something that I really really love and I know yes I am well aware that Alcohol is called spirits for a reason because it can attract spirits to us. So I know that. However, I've never had an issue with it up until this point in time in this experience. Um, And so in this little mini restaurant, we get a bottle of wine that's like the special local restaurateur who owns it. I'm so excited. The wine is delicious. So I have a couple of glasses of wine. We're splitting this single bottle amongst multiple people. And I've had my couple glasses of wine. We leave the fort. We go to the concert. And Emily doesn't remember the rest of the night. I swear to God. It was one of the weirdest experiences that I have ever had. I did not remember anything after having those couple glasses of wine. Apparently, we were dancing. According to my boyfriend, who I've been dating for almost eight years, I was aggressive. I was mean towards him. I was trying to like fight him and push him off of me, which I never do. I never act that way. I'm not an aggressive person. And yes, I drink alcohol, but I have never had an issue with aggression and alcohol ever in my life up until this point in time. So I wasn't acting like myself. And it was just this bizarre series of events. I remember getting home from the venue. Of course, I was, you know, fine the rest of the night, went to bed, woke up the next morning, of course, from having some wine, I wasn't feeling the best. So needed to hydrate, deal with the hangover, etc. However, that next day, as I was walking around my neighborhood where I live, I was not feeling well. I had a headache, of course, because of this whole situation. And I heard in my mind, again, remember, I'm psychic. I do this work for a living. I heard in my mind a voice. I will never forget it. And this voice said to me, it's because you are a sinner. It was the clearest voice. And I still get the chills thinking about hearing that voice in my mind. It was so creepy, you guys. So creepy. And I just thought to myself, that was not from my my spirit guides. Who was that from? Where the hell did that come from? I never get negative messages ever uh, from my spirit guide team. So that just creeped me the frick out. And in the days following this concert experience, I did not feel like myself. I felt like I was underwater. I couldn't sleep at night. I was having nightmares at night where there were intruders who were coming into my home. I just felt awful during the day because I wasn't sleeping. And I just did not feel like myself. And occasionally I would have those weird thoughts in my mind. You're bad. You're a sinner. And it was all about sin. It was all about being a you know, bad person. And so after a, about a week after this has been going on, I'm like, something is off. What, what is happening? Like, this is not normal, Emily. I'm such a happy-go-lucky person. I'm such a joyful person. This is not me. 
And thankfully, I felt really intuitively drawn to schedule a consultation with Kristen, who I knew who does entity attachment, to ask her about this. And I gave her the whole story and the whole situation. I was like, look, I had a couple of glasses of wine. I was, you know, obviously drinking. And but that wine shouldn't have caused me to not remember the rest of the night and act in a way that I never act and then have these creepy thoughts in the days after this concert. Like, what is going on? And she was very clear and said, like, it looks like, unfortunately, you took on some sort of entity attachment. So, (laughs) and by the way, I don't mean all of this to scare you. I am a spiritual teacher, so I have these crazy experiences because I am meant to teach about them and to help you understand how they could impact you and your life. So I scheduled the entity attachment with Kristen. Thankfully, it's only in a couple of days, so I just have to deal with how I was feeling for those next couple of days. And the way that Kristen does entity attachment release is she puts you in the meditative state so that you are working in tandem with her to deal with the entity itself, to find out what it is, why it's there, what it wants from you, and to figure out the situation that has caused the entity to attach to you. So in the meditative state, and because my psychic gifts are very open with from me doing this work, it was It happened very, very quickly. And I was able to see and discover that this entity was taking on (laughs) the form of this creepy nun, you guys, this super creepy nun. I could see her clearly in my mind's eye. And she kind of had like a little bit of a glitchy look to her as if she was changing forms every few minutes and so i told kristen this and she said oh it's because it's a trickster spirit so i had a trickster spirit attached to me and we discovered through talking to the entity and me being in the meditative state kristen took me into a past lifetime in which i had been a nun in a convent with this entity that had been attached that had attached to me in this lifetime and in the past lifetime the nun was obsessed with me (laughs) and I apparently was popular I had a lot of friends I was charismatic in that past lifetime and this nun was very jealous of me and very jealous of my relationships and in fact so jealous that she actually fell in love with me which ooh, Catholic Church a woman in love with another woman like that is a big no-no So in that past lifetime, this nun struggled with her feelings towards me of the jealousy and the love and the desire, all of that, and wanted to attempt to control me. So she would do weird things in the past lifetime to manipulate me and to try to get what she wanted, which was my attention. And so in this lifetime, because I was raised in the Catholic Church, I have a little bit of wounding around feeling like I'm a sinner, feeling like I'm bad, feeling like I, I, you know, doing normal human things makes me a sinner or makes me bad or makes me wrong. And so that, that piece of my shadow, that piece of my unconscious mind that I had not taken a look at yet, that I did hadn't wanted to deal with, in combination with the wine and the combination of being at a concert at a haunted venue was the perfect storm for an entity to find a loophole and gain my permission to come into my field. And the the way that she was able to do that was because I was pretty much unconscious from having a couple glasses of wine. And entities can actually really manipulate your energetic field so they can make things like Uh, forgetting the night or forgetting what's happening because of alcohol happen because they have the ability to kind of manipulate how you feel. Um, And also they have the the way to manipulate your dream state and your sleep state. So I wasn't able to sleep. So she was quickly in that week afterwards, before I had the entity release session, she was quickly able to drain a lot of my energy and to to take. So entities, by the way, they are lower consciousness, lower vibrational beings who need 
human hosts to feed off of, they, or they need other hosts to feed off of. And the way that they continue to exist, these can be human spirits that haven't fully crossed over yet. We call those uh, earthbound spirits that are still attached to this earth plane because they have trauma that they haven't processed yet. Therefore, they haven't been able to cross over to the other side. But these spirits can also be just low vibrational, low conscious consciousness beings that need an energetic source to fuel itself off of. So getting rid of the entity with Kristen's help was such a game changer for me. In the minutes after we did the entity release work, I started to get my energy back. I started to feel like myself again. I started to feel so much lighter. And thankfully that healing continued over the following days and weeks after the session as a whole. But it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about the importance of maintaining psychic and energetic protection. It taught me the the importance of the fact that as an a spiritual healer and a spiritual teacher, I am not immune to things like entities. I am not immune to the dark side of the spirit world. And that has inspired me so much to want to teach you that you need to be aware of these things. Because if you're walking around with either entity attachments, again, that was my specific situation. There are a myriad of different situations that can create room for an entity to come into your auric field and to feed off of your energy. A lot of people who are in a very bad place or dealing with mental health crises, the main cause is entity attachment. It truly is. And because our the, the world isn't even educated about the spirit world, let alone mental health, let alone dealing with mental health crisis, the last thing we can tell people is, oh, you're having a mental health crisis because it's an entity attachment. Like people would think you're crazy. However, that's often the root cause of when people are going through major, major, major mental crisis and struggle. It is often the root of it is an entity attachment, but they have to be conscious enough and ready to recognize that and ready to let that go so that they can be able to move on uh, in their own life. So that's a whole topic for another time. But for you watching this, because you're awake and aware enough to understand um, your spiritual journey and so on and so forth, what you really need to take away from this is that we're not immune to entity attachment. I, that really has taught me to make sure that I'm really maintaining my psychic and protection boundaries and that I'm also avoiding situations like that at haunted places where there may be lower vibrational energies hanging out that I just don't need to be there. I don't need to um, expose myself to that and I don't, you know, I don't need to have those sorts of experiences again. And that experience also led me down a path of exploring my shadow and tapping into some of those unhealed parts of myself, some of those more traumatic past life experiences, like the one that I just shared with you, some more challenging childhood experiences that I've had, and other more traumatic events that have been stored in my unconscious mind, that if I don't look at them, if I don't work with them, if I don't meet them with love and compassion, those things are going to own me and they're going to run my behavior and the way that I react and respond to the world. And so it's so important that when you meet those parts of yourself with love and compassion, you will find a whole new love for yourself. You will start to create this beautiful sense of radiant confidence within yourself that is just I can't even articulate it. It's unexplainable. You will feel so much more like yourself. You will just grow into this more embodied, more whole, more aware version of who you are. And that in and of itself, especially if you're a business owner, is going to make you so magnetic to clients, to business opportunities, 
to money and abundance and all the things that as a business owner, I know you desperately want to manifest for yourself in your life. And this has continued to put me on a path where I continue to want to meet my darkness and to take a look at it and to work with it and to understand it so that I can, again, meet it with love and compassion and let some of those heavier emotions and feelings go. Now, the beautiful thing that gets born out of this, once we've looked at our wounded darkness, we've met it with love and compassion, we've let go of some of those heavier emotions, that wounded darkness gets integrated as divine darkness. The whole point of this video to help you to understand that once you've met your shadow with love and you accept it and grow in acceptance for it, it becomes integrated as a part of you that will help you to be full of so much more love and compassion for yourself. And you're just gonna, again, feel like this incredible, magnetic, charismatic version of you. And what happened after that experience for me? Well, it really up-leveled my business journey. I started and committed to working with clients who are spiritual entrepreneurs and business owners. And that helped me up-level into a new version of business where I started calling in a different type of client. It started, it helped me to hone my spiritual practices as well as the coaching and the teaching and the mentoring that I do in the Akashic Records. And it helped elevate my income as well. And so much more abundance started coming into my business and my life as a result. And so if you are a spiritual business owner and you know that you are ready to meet your divine darkness with love and compassion, not to avoid or bypass entity situations like what happened to me, but to discover all parts of yourself so that you can love yourself more unconditionally and therefore be able to help provide a better service to your clients so that you can make a better impact on this planet. Kristen and I would love to have you in the Divine Darkness Academy. Again, it is a six-month experience for business owners. The first half of the mentorship, we're going to spend diving into your divine darkness and your shadow to help uncover fear and shame and hidden unhealed wounds that you may not be aware of that exist so that we can meet them with love and compassion. We can integrate them as divine darkness. And then you can learn how to do this work for your clients. You can learn how to integrate it into your business as well. And that may change your branding. That may change your business mission. That may change the type of client that you work with. And that is gonna totally up level you, your business, your money in abundance in so many incredible ways. And so we would love to have you in this mentorship. The link is going to be in the caption, so make sure you check that out. And I know that this topic can bring up a lot of questions, so feel free to comment those below. I'm happy to answer them. This has been my personal experience with entities and working with my darkness and my shadow. And so I hope to help educate you more about that topic. But I would also love to hear your thoughts and whether or not this resonated with you. If you liked this video, if you found it intriguing, if you want more content like this, please subscribe to my channel so that I can continue making awesome videos like this one. And oh, of course, give this video a thumbs up as well. I'm sending you so much love and good vibes for the rest of your day. And I will see you next week in next week's video. Bye for now.